Would it kill any of you to pick up a history book? Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hot Take with Hila on JTV. The Human Rights Watch, a private, non-governmental research organization, recently decided to write a glorified Twitter thread on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In their report, they lie, mischaracterize, change definitions, and flat-out ignore history in order to create more hatred and vilification of arguably the world's most persecuted group. You know, because you can't advocate for human rights unless you're advocating to take those rights away from the Jewish people. How stupid of me to expect any less from these so-called champions of social justice. So why don't we get into some highlights? First, let's talk about their use of the term Occupied Palestinian Territory, or as they like to call it, OPT. Would anyone care to fill me in on when the land was under Palestinian sovereignty of any kind? Just a single year in that supposed period of rule? No? Could it be that maybe the land was never Palestinian? Could it be that the Roman Emperor Hadrian just wanted to rename the territory after the suppression of the Bar Kokhba revolt to distance Jewish connection from their homeland? And that's the reason a group of Arabs are identifying themselves with a Latin word, not knowing that the root of the word is the Hebrew word for invader, that they're literally calling themselves invaders. Okay, cool, so glad we got that out of the way, because if the land was never Palestinian, which it wasn't, it cannot now be OPT. Also, let's look at the land that they're calling OPT, the West Bank in Gaza. Israel pulled out of Gaza completely in 2005, and thousands of Jewish families were displaced in order to give Palestinians a chance for self-governance, and then they elected Hamas, who have been in power ever since. Also crazy how they only wanted to govern a land with no Jews in it, that's not at all alarming and totally not indicative of what a free Palestine actually means. You might look at a map of Israel and say, hey, the West Bank is an unusual name for that territory because despite the fact that it's on the west of the Jordan River, it's on the east side of the country. To which I would say, what an excellent observation. That's because the land was only renamed the West Bank in 1948 after it was illegally annexed by Jordan and they completely ethnically cleansed its entire Jewish population. Its actual name is Judea and Samaria. And then you might say something like, Judea and Samaria? Isn't that the heart of the Jewish homeland? Isn't it completely filled with archeological finds that prove Jewish ties to the land and Jewish sovereignty? And then I'd say you're 100% correct. And then we laugh about the absolute absurdity of the claim that an indigenous people can occupy their own land. Not to mention all that land was granted to Israel legally and when surrounding Arab leaders threw a temper tantrum because the existence of a Jewish state disrupted their dream of a large unified Arab empire and decided to wage a genocidal war against us, we won! And when you win a war, specifically a defensive war over your indigenous homeland, you get to keep the land. Well, at least you do if you aren't Jewish. It's also funny how they label Judea and Samaria as being OPT from 1967. Okay, everyone, pop quiz. Who had control over Judea and Samaria before 1967? Ding, 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 that's right, Jordan. Did they ever talk about creating an independent Palestinian state? No. They were the independent Arab state made from the British Mandate of Palestine, and they took that land illegally. Would it kill any of you to pick up a history book? The report then goes on to say that they are charging Israel with apartheid and persecution. The issue here being they changed the definition of apartheid and failed to recognize that Palestinians are not Israeli citizens, nor do they want to be Israeli citizens because that would involve recognizing Israel as a legitimate state. In any country, non-citizens do not have the same rights as citizens. If a Canadian was living in America at the time of the election, would they be allowed to vote? No! In fact, if they did, it would be a crime. Also, Israelis can't vote in Palestinian elections, not that they're really having elections because they've been taken over by some of the most corrupt people in the world, but let's not blame them for any of the Palestinian suffering. Is that apartheid? What about the fact that Israelis can't enter Area A of Judea and Samaria and that it's extremely difficult to enter Area B? No, that's fine. Okay, well, how about the fact that the Palestinian Authority made it illegal to sell land to Jews? And that they'll kill any Palestinian who does and that they'll be labeled as a traitor? Nope, that that's okay. What about how they deliberately keep their people poor, hoard all the money from foreign aid for themselves, and promise them and their families a lifetime salary if they can just kill a Jew? You didn't detect any possible violation of human rights there. <laughs> It's almost like you don't actually care about the well-being of the people living in the region. In the spirit of having the accuracy of a woke, chic, aesthetic Instagram post, the HRW decided to provide us with some fun graphics all in cute little pastels. They used them to show the supposed disparities between Jews and Palestinians without taking into account the actual reality or cause of said disparities. Let's start with Hannah and Layla. Oh, would you look at that? Hannah looks like the poster child for Aryan beauty in Nazi Germany. In fact, all of their depictions of Jews were extremely whitewashed. 
Maybe they couldn't be bothered to look up the fact that most Israelis are Mizrahi or Sephardi. Maybe they don't know that Ashkenazi Jews are still Middle Eastern, and the reason Ashkenazi Jews look much lighter today than they did, say, a hundred years ago is because the darker you looked, the easier it was to pick you out as a Jew during the Holocaust, so Jews with lighter features were more likely to survive. Speaking of, don't you think it's funny how in Nazi Germany, caricatures of Jews had exaggerated Middle Eastern features because their highest values were of racial purity and white supremacy? And now that the West values human rights and dismantling white supremacy, we are the white human rights violators? We're the same Jews. We descend from the same people who are depicted as dark-skinned and hook-nosed. What changed? The set of anti-Semites trying to destroy us. See, this is a very common tactic of anti-Semitism, transforming Jews into whatever society deems to be the most deplorable. In the Soviet Union, we were the capitalist bourgeois cosmopolitans. In America, we were the slimy, conniving socialists. We are hated for being rich. We are hated for being poor. We are hated for trying to assimilate. We are hated for keeping to ourselves the common thread being we are hated. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is not a racial issue. If you think it is, you don't know about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That aside, Hannah is an American Jew and the HRW is condemning her for the crime of being born. Layla, which is an interesting name to choose for this because recently the terrorist plane hijacker Layla Khalid has been getting a lot of clout as American universities attempt to give her a platform so that she can infect the minds of the next generation into thinking that terrorism is sometimes justifiable, but I digress. Layla is a so-called refugee born in Lebanon. By the way, did you know that the UN has a separate definition of refugee status specifically for Palestinians so that they can exaggerate this crisis? That's not suspicious. Yeah, and Arabs who came to the land as recently as the mid-1940s are classified as Palestinians. This means that Layla's family could originally be from Lebanon, have moved to somewhere in Eretz Israel in say 1944, left the land because of the war that Arabs started, gone back to Lebanon, and still be classified as refugees. Not only that, but it's not just the people who left the land who are considered refugees, it's their descendants. Layla looks to be in her late teens, early 20s. She's not a refugee. She wasn't displaced from anywhere, neither were her parents, and possibly not even her grandparents. But all that aside, why not ask the real question here? It's been 73 years. Why haven't the Lebanese accepted these so-called refugees into their society? Why does Lebanon refuse to house them and let them out of refugee camps? You know, a little over a week ago, I went to Samaria with some friends. The part of Samaria we went to is an area B is only open to Jews once a week, and we had to go with military escorts to avoid being lynched. We visited the ancient Northern Kingdom of Israel's capital city, which would be a huge site for Jewish tourism, but it's widely restricted. It's also been desecrated with PLO graffiti and random Palestinians taking stones from the ruins to build whatever they want. After that, we went to Mount Grazim, which overlooks the city of Shechem, also known as Nablus. And of course, I have to mention that Nablus comes from a Latin name and that most names of Palestinian cities are either Latin or Hebrew, which is just further proof that Arabs are not indigenous to this land. When you look into Shechem from the mountaintop, you can clearly see the entire city as well as the refugee camp right next to it, and they are right next to each other. Why haven't the residents of Shechem allowed these refugees to integrate into their city? Oh, because these so-called refugees are from Haifa or Yafo. They're not from Nablus. They're not part of us. It's for that same reason the so-called refugees don't want to move into Shechem. Their whole lives they've been told they belong to another part of the land, despite the fact that they were born and raised in Shechem. Also, how can one be a refugee in their own land? That's not how this works. I'm sorry, I really have no desire to hear what you have to say about this so-called refugee crisis when you clearly ignore the fact that these refugee camps are being kept in place to use these people as political pawns. It is not in Israel's control to disband these camps. That change must come internally from the Palestinians. They just don't want to make the change because that would mean that they'd have to take responsibility and not blame Israel. This report makes an absolute mockery of the fight for human rights. If there really is such a huge crisis at the hand of the Israelis, why do you need to lie to get your point across? Why not place blame where blame is actually due? You might actually accomplish something other than participating in the steep rise of anti-Semitism. It should also be noted, as pointed out by the Israel advocacy movement, that the HRW didn't say a word on last year's three deadliest conflicts. In Syria, where 11,000 were killed. In Yemen, where 21,000 were killed. Oh, and they also just happened to ethnically cleanse their last three Jewish families, but no word on that either. And in Afghanistan, where 42,000 people were killed. Less than 100 people were killed in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict last year, and the vast majority of those Palestinians were terrorists. We know you don't actually care about human rights. You're just set on perpetuating Soviet-era anti-Semitic propaganda because you know the Soviet Union were such champions of human rights. They only murdered 15 million people. Why not continue that legacy? 
What really gets me about this conflict is how much misinformation is so easily avoidable. The anti-Zionist movement feeds off of ignorance. I implore you all to educate yourselves. Do actual thorough research. Come to Israel, see what it's really like. I'm sure everyone who supported the Nazi party thought that they were just as woke as you do. You are not immune to being an anti-Semite just because you're a liberal. You are not immune to being an anti-Semite just because you claim to care about social justice. And please, Listen to Jews when they tell you you're being anti-Semitic. We know what it looks like much better than you do. I'm Hila Oz, and you're watching JTV.